the box set, the reunion, and uh, the classic rock awards. So first of all, how are you feeling about the fourth reunion box set? What do I feel about it? Well, as, as long as it looks good, then obviously it's a, it's a nice thing, a nice thing to be recognised like that. Um, if it looks like shit, then I'm not so happy about it. <laughs> but I have faith in you, Ian, and Snapper, so uh, I'm sure Rob's got his own version of that one. No, it, it all sounds very exciting. The feedback we're getting, and this is the first time that all our albums have been together in, in, the, in the same package, because the first two albums are on another source. Um, and we've also included, it's, it, I think it includes every recording that you've done, uh, plus we've got the signed certificate for Roger, the imitation sounds tape, which uh, Rob will kindly hold up there, uh, which has just got family articles in it, three CD singles, um, a 72 page book with lots of unreleased pictures and cuttings, wow. um, and uh, the, the, the whole box itself so far we've, uh, we've had a lot of people very excited about it but is there any particular thing that Rob you you know out of that that you're pleased to see out you're just pleased to see it all together or? I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I mean I, to be honest I can't remember when you were saying number of these tracks and things like that you know I'm uh, I can't remember all of these you know it's how many years ago for goodness sake you know well, it is 40. I mean, it's the, 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 the sort of 40 years since Bangsang came oh, I never knew there were any outtakes. I no, I never knew that until this last three months. And um, when we and found the tapes? Tapes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they're good, actually. Are they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, That's always the case, yeah. isn't it? Before the overdose. Why did we use that no, one? Because <laughs> no, obviously we had strings and things like that. But some of the bass tracks are really good, and, wh and it's just our kind of little inventions. Aren't yeah. They? And they're really nice to hear. There's oh, a particular um, um, Spanish time, that there's about six oh, different gosh. versions on that, and you actually hear the track developing. Yeah. Um, and you hear Charlie introducing, talking to the producer. Uh, it's really, <laughs> the clarity is fantastic. But I think the most, one of the most important things, and most exciting things from our point of view, was the fact it's like they're from the original masters. So the quality on CD yeah. will probably be the best we've ever had on CD before, because six of the albums are straight from master tape, oh, wow. including the alternate tapes which were found on uh, yeah. in your loft, Roger. Is that correct? Oh, so apparently, yes. <laughs> but I, well, I couldn't, I never, couldn't blame them, because yeah. they're on like two inch or inch, yeah. then it's just been there. Real thing. This shit, and I kind of went, well, I ignored it, to be honest. I thought he said you could said you could do it something with these. That's so we put it all down here and then the found all this stuff. We baked them, um, put them onto digital, and then I was sent the the CDs to listen to to see what they were. And of course, that was the the, the eureka moment when I was hearing instrumental versions of my friend the son mm -hmm. studio chatter talking about getting pizzas brought in and you know <laughs> really <laughs> intimate things which were fantastic because to, to a, from a fan's perspective. It was just, you got a real insight to being in the studio with you guys, and it was just so, it was a revelation. And as I said, when we played it back to Roger in this room, he was completely yeah. shocked. I mean, that's it. I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. I mean, does that mean I can't play them on my dance set? <laughs> you think I'm joking, don't you? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, we might be able to do some 180 gravel, maybe even put them on 78s for you. Well, I know are coming back. That could be, uh, he's definitely coming back. But, 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 you know, there's different aspects of the box that people I've spoken to are finding exciting. The book, um, Pete Fink's just done a fabulous job, and he's done a lot of great research. There's people, there's a woman in America who's produced loads of backstage photos, wow. sketches. She was a big family fan, and she worked for Vogue, I believe, at the time. Um, but um, it's, you know, the box is not out until the end of January, but just getting the whole package together, there's so many sales points in there uh, that are very, that each fan, a lot of different fans are finding it exciting. They're finding different bits. Some people are more excited about the, the sound quality, others are about the only to take, others about the book. Yeah, but, I mean, just in a, in a basic sense, to be honest, I never ever thought, all our albums would actually be in one collection. It's remarkable. We've, we've had all <coughs> Chile, Argentina, the Ukraine, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, a, a lot from America. Oh, you've not seen the tour for next year then? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
that, 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 that leads on nicely because obviously what's prompted um, the excitement uh, was 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 then we, 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 the reunion, um, which you know what made you decide to, to finally go to, to have a go. I don't know. It's, I mean, obviously, I assume Rob's the same. You know, you've been asked the question right all over the forty years, basically. Um, and it's never kind of come together, you know, we drifted apart. It's like being at school with people you knew when you did that. And some people tend to think you still hang out together. Well, it's 40 years later, you know, whole new careers, families, everything. Every move, every pastures, you know, new pastures. And I just got, I suppose, I just got that much, I was going to say flack. <laughs> Uh, asked so many times, and I thought, oh, well, okay, we'll see if people are interested, and if so, and if we've all got the bottle to have a go, then let's have a go, you know, and then, of course, the box set thing come up, so it just it all sort of, it's kind of tight, it's starting to tie in. And, and of course, I'll go on to the you, you know, you, you put one day, and you sold that in no time at all, and it looks like the second date's about to sell out as well. Um, but um, you obviously felt once the time was right after all this time you know, to change. Well, so, I don't know. I don't know why. I, mean, I just got bored of being asked, I suppose. Well, but I said, but I, to be honest, I left it to others. You know, it wasn't my under my direction at all. I says, all right, I'll have a go if everybody else is interested. You know, and so obviously the word went out. Now, Charlie Whitney. Um, many people are asking, um, not in the lineup, the reunion lineup, but. He was asked, wasn't he? Yes, of course. Obviously, he was one of the first members I brought on, one of the first to be asked, um, for, for the obvious reasons that the three of us are the mainstay of the band anyway, you know. Absolutely. And whatever happened, but I, well, we hope for us three, you know, plus extras. But um, but Charlie lives elsewhere. Again, like I said earlier, you know, we've all, over 40 years, we've all developed our different lifestyles and uh, gone different ways. and. Charlie now lives in another part of the world. He's in the sunshine playing bazookas and eating, <laughs> <laughs> eating chopsticks. I mean, he, and he, he wasn't interested. No, just, he, he says, well, good luck, and, uh, but I'm not going to come over just for the gig. It's just too, too much work. And again, nobody actually thinks about the age that yeah. we all are. Yeah, that's true. You know, and it, to say 40 years later, we're all, well, I mean, I'm actually 70. Rob must be in his 60s now. Charlie's definitely in his 70s. Nobody knows how anybody's health is. It's true. You know, we're so lucky to actually for one of us not to be in fucking hospital. Then no I getting on the stage and doing a fucking gig. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <coughs> so I mean, it's that kind of that kind of sort of uh, uh, question, really. I mean, other than it being obviously very naive, there's uh, there's no and, and actually some people have been aggressive about the whole question. And uh, you just think, well, you, you're not really thinking on your feet here. No. Right? You know, no. I mean, they haven't taken anything into consideration. They're obviously 45 years ago <laughs> brain wise, you know, not thinking about how anybody's mm. developed or done anything. And it's that, that's a bit kind of annoying, really, you know. And it's a well, I think also to put to the records, because there's always. In any band, when they split up, the, you know the rumours. Well, you and Charlie went on to form the Streetwalkers for many yes, years and had right. a lot of success. And there wasn't a falling out between the two. You just went your separate ways. Yeah. Exactly. And you yeah. still keep in touch with each other. Well, not that much, to be honest. You know, I mean, maybe a couple of e a couple of emails a year. But that's still keeping in touch. Yes, you know. But um, we, we obviously we don't mix. So I live here. He lives there. And Rob and I see each other probably not that much, but. More occasionally, just because we're in the same about five miles away from each other, yeah. we live, you know. I have a tendency of touring Germany and everywhere I play, they say, Guess who was here last night? or Guess who we got to last night? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the paths has crossed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, the, the, you know, you've all done, you've all sort of been doing your own thing and, and successfully as well. and. Uh, and as you said, Rog, it's keeping healthy. We're all getting older, and yeah. people can't expect you to be like you were 40 years yeah. ago. And, and I don't think the majority of people, that in, in, with all due respect, that are going to go to those gigs, they're just delighted you're getting back together. Oh, again. I think there's some, going to be some fantastic warmth from these people. Definitely. It's just going to be like a, oh, really, really good for us. Not just the, the 
people in the band, but for themselves and all of us as a collective thing, it's going to be such a, a warm feeling. I'm considering, but there are going to be some. There's probably going to be about 50 to 70 people who are going to have the right on because it's not the band they wanted to see. Or you didn't. And it's not the songs song. that exactly. yeah. they expected to play. Do you know Why didn't they're you do? Go, they're going to go out the door and go. Huh, huh, huh. Yeah. Are there going to be any more gigs? Oh, well, we, I mean, we're getting, uh, I wouldn't say offers, but uh, people suggesting that maybe we might like to play here and there. You know, I think generally we all want to see what happens in February. I'd like to see it's that. It's going to be so, so different for us. And for two nights, it's like, it's actually like putting a, a West End musical on for two days. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable the amount of work we've still got to do, never mind anything else. No, I can believe, I can believe it, but... The songs have never been played ever since, we've never played together ever since, you know, and, uh, and you, so it's, a, it's a hell of a lot of work. Your style's changed, you know, yeah. I, I've been listening to some of the old tracks, and I, you know, it's 1920 then, and I'm sort of, <laughs> now. And, um, and, you know, you, you, you play with the amount of energy that you think you've got, but when you listen to some of the, the live stuff that we did that, I think, bloody hell, how did I manage that, you know? And it's, people have got to realise that not only have you physically changed, your musical approach has changed. You know, you did things then which were off the wall, that, you know, that they seemed right. Technically, they were probably wrong. They were wrong from quite a few times from my point of view, you know, whereas now you've, you've, you've learnt a bit more and you think, oh, I wouldn't do well, that. Yeah, you, you put yourself into a routine. Yeah. Well, that's how it happens. That's called old age, mate. <laughs> it, is, it is, you know, I mean, the great ones go on and invent forever and ever. No, I, I think it's, it's jazz. I think you summed it up, Rod, when you said, I think on that night there'll be a real feel-good factor. You will mm. always get one or two people that will moan. Oh, it's going to be tears in the eyes and all that shit. But Garrett, and I mean that and the most possible. Yeah. 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 And the audience. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, what I would say about the book as well is that you did mention to me that you know when you were going through the, the script that Peter had written and the quotes you got because obviously you wanted to have a look. That you know there were times in there when it was like a roller coaster reading back then, and it did make you quite tearful to look back at forty years. Yeah. Before, you know, and some amazing times that you had. And you were a very close to you then, you know. I learned more about myself reading the book than I've ever known. And the cherry on the top, of course, has been your uh, classic rock award issue, your first ever award. Well, Rob's. Rob's classic rock award, he did, did he? Um, which, at last, I mean, it is disgraceful that this, this is the first time in 40 years, and you should have been recognised long before now. This is your first award, and it very well earned. And, you know, you can tell by the fellow <coughs> musicians that were in the room that night, including Lenny, Rick Waitman, even Captain Sensible from The Damned I was talking to, all thought it was wonderful you were at last getting some recognition. He, so you, he, he was wonderful, actually. Some years ago I did Glastonbury, and um, I, um, I didn't know him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean the drummer, and I forgot the flaming name. Scott. Yeah. Skaven, that's Skaven. That's Skaven right, and uh, yeah. he was talking to one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to one of, one of the guys that um, I was playing with, and I, I came in the dressing room, and uh, he said, "Oh, do you know? Do you know Rob?" And he said, "No." He said, "Rob Townsend, that's Skaven." And I said, "Hi," and he said, "Hello." Really old fan. <laughs> and I went to Rob, and he said, "You know Rob Townsend out of family, are you?" And I said, yeah, and he said, oh my goodness, oh, and he totally dropped down on his knee, <laughs> didn't he fall off? And he said, God, he said, we just put a signal out, a uh, single out. He said, I need the drumming off of um, Peace of Mind off a of doll's house. Fantastic. I said, really? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, a straight lift. I just, anyway, you know, I forgot all about it. And then about three weeks later, a record came in <laughs> through the post, and it was, uh, it was his single. It was one of the sort of letter endings with all rats and everything and snakes around the letter and he says, I told you I nicked you all drummy. Well, the, the thing about the Classic Rock Awards is it, it brought you to a new audience as well, which is great because there was a lot of younger rock um, bands there and fans. Mm. So it's just nice to get, and people will want to explore that. Um, and as I say, it's just, it's just great because that, 
has just been the cherry on top. We've got the box, the, the, the reunion gig, which has excited a lot of people. Now, favourite family album, Rob, if I was to put you on the spot, what would you think? Today and now, it may change next week. He's going to totally disagree with me. But what would you say? I'm, my personal favourite, because I love some of the songs on it, is It's Only a Movie. I love it too, yeah. Uh, and I have a son who thinks Leroy is one of the best songs he's ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a grower, that. It definitely is. I, I couldn't be wrong. What about you? Well, I'd bounce between a few. I mean, the only one that I think is really under par is anyway. Um, mm, I think we yeah. um, But the others all have some kind of good points. I wouldn't say I'm satisfied with any of them all the way through. Everybody's got a favourite. I mean, it, Trev, who runs your website, is he one of his favourite albums, is anyway? So, do you know, that's not one of your favourites. No, I don't. Everybody is well, it's things. a soft. You see, the thing is, anyway, was a, a, I suppose a softer thing. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. It, it's unfortunate it was a, a live show that we should never have actually put down on tape. Mm. We were so much better than that. But as mad as we were, and to be honest, it's a typical family thing, is that we kind of knock the, song, the new songs up in the afternoon, then decide to do them on stage and record them. I mean, how fucking mad is that? Oh, no. Was it, that was Compass on I mean, we're re yes. yeah, we were rehearsing these things in this dressing room the, end, the, the day of the show, you know, new, brand new songs. And um, for that, I mean, that's just completely illogical, and I love it for that. But at the same time, we should have waited at least three months. Spontaneity. I, I yeah. stood in the wings yeah. to yeah. walk on, and you decided <laughs> to do Compass. And I said, what do I play? And they said, you've got a tambourine or something? I said, yeah, and that's what it is. But that's what is it? Yes. <laughs> we couldn't afford it. <laughs> Session money out of the window. Oh, my father, my